Hello and welcome back. In our last video, we began the process of designing a graphics editor, which can be used to create drawings using the matplotlib library. In this video, we will continue developing the editor as an API or application programming interface. Think of any software you use. Do you see all of the code? Of course not. From a user point of view, you only need to interact with the parts you actually use. To see the rest would be distracting and confusing. From the software designer's point of view, you would want to protect the inner workings and be able to revise them without affecting the user's experience. It is kind of like driving a car. You operate the steering wheel, gas pedal, and brakes. You do not need to adjust the oxygen fuel mixture as you drive. This function is performed by different combinations of equipment, sensors, and software, which all have changed over the years without interfering with the driver's operation of the car. Back to our graphics editor. We have already decided that we are going to use a list of lists structure. Each shape object is a list consisting of the X and Y arrays, the object identifier, the line color, the line width, and fill set to yes or no. Now let's look at what functions we need. Then we will run the demo to see how we move from one function to another. First, we need a function to create the list of lists itself, which we will name new drawing. This starts an empty list, which will be populated by the shape lists. The function add shape appends each shape list D to the list created by new drawing. When we call add shape in our main program, we will also list the parameters needed to create the list for D. To plot my drawing, we create a function named draw that includes all the plotting parameters for the grid and axes. Draw uses a for loop, for S in D, to iterate through all the shapes. There is lots of action in this function. Let's take a closer look at draw. The first parameter is the shape list D. The next four parameters set the range of the grid dimensions in the X and Y direction. The defaults are none. The remaining six parameters are all Booleans defined to either true or false. In the body of the function, we test for the presence of the default values and state which action to take if they are detected, and in some cases, not detected. In the for s in d loop, we pull values from the shape list and assign them to variables for plotting. Notice that fill requires an if-else statement to call the correct method, plt.fill or plt.plot. Finally, we need a function for each shape type, which will generate the X and Y arrays for the shape list. To begin with, we will stick to two basic and versatile shapes, circle and rectangle. Eventually, our API will include many more. All of these functions will be hidden within our API. Even a simple task, such as creating the empty list, stays hidden because it is part of the entire API structure. If we ever wanted to change our data structure, for example, to object-oriented programming rather than lists of lists, we can do so without disturbing the user experience. Let's step through the first shape, then we will skip the internal steps within each function for the rest. After the functions are defined, our libraries are imported. 
Then we call new drawing to create the empty list. It returns the empty list to our global variable SE. Next, we create and add our first shape using add shape. The arguments for add shape define SE as a list of lists we are pending to, and then call our function circle, together with the three parameters needed for circle, and finally the label and the plotting parameters. The function circle returns the X and Y arrays, so now we have the six arguments we need for our shape object list. Now that circle has returned these values, our main program jumps to add shape to append our shape list to the list of lists. Look what happens to our global variable SE. The list is already too long to display in our variables window as shown by the ellipses. However, take a look at the three opening brackets. The outer one is for the list of lists, the second one is for the shape object list, and the inner bracket is for the X array. Our next line calls draw together with the arguments needed for plotting. Watch how values are added to our variables list as each condition is tested. The for loop goes through one iteration since we only have one item in our list of lists so far, and it plots a cyan circle. Now let's use the skip function to draw the remaining shapes. Skip only points to the lines in the main program and the function remains hidden. Note, for our demonstration purposes, we are calling draw every time we add a shape. Normally, however, we would only call it once at the end of the program. So there you have it. Since we are the developers of the source code, we get to see how all of the functions work. The end user would not. Let's review two fundamental principles of API design. Number one, your internal data structures should not be exposed to users. This makes their work easier and protects your software. And number two, a well-designed API should sustain internal software changes. This means you should be able to revise or even completely rewrite the source code without fundamentally changing how the program works for the user. Take the time to step or skip through the demonstration a few times so that you understand how the API works. And I'll see you in the next video.